Today is the beginning of a five-part journey about how we fuel our forges. Welcome to Warp Legacy. Welcome back to the office. This is a video series that I'm doing with Roy Adams from Christ Centered Ironworks. It started off as we were just going to try each other's fuels because he uses bituminous coal and I use anthracite coal and we were going to put anthracite in his forge and bituminous coal in my forge and see what happens. And it somehow turned into an entire series on different forge fuels. And this video is just an overview of the four different fuels that I am making a video on. So as these videos come out, there will be a video for every fuel that I talk about in this video. So let's get out to the forge. So today we are going to talk about four different kinds of fuel. Anthracite coal, bituminous coal, charcoal, and wood. Now these are the four types of fuels that I have easy access to. This is nut-sized anthracite coal. This is pea-sized bituminous coal. This is just plain old charcoal briquettes. And this is a stick that I found in my yard. So now we're gonna get rid of these for a minute. We're gonna talk about coal. Slide over. Okay, now the difference in size here has nothing to do with the different type of coal that it is. This is bituminous coal because it hasn't gone through as much metamorphical processes as this. What is coal in the first place? Coal starts off as dead plant matter. There may be some animal matter in it too, but it's dead organic matter that's mostly plant matter. It collects in a swamp or a bog and then it turns into peat. And peat is basically the dead organic matter that's been compressed slightly and started to decay. The peat then gets buried under pressure and heat and I'm going to take a quote from one of uh, Daniel Moss's recent live streams. Science stuff happens. The peak gets buried and there's heat and pressure and science stuff happens and it turns into lignite, which is often called brown coal. It is the coal that's gone under the least process underground. Then more heat, more pressure, more science stuff that turns into subbituminous coal, has a higher carbon content and less other stuff mixed in. Then more heat, more pressure, more science stuff, and you get to bituminous coal. All of the other, the lignite and the subbituminous sub, the lignite and the subbituminous coal are used for heating for different purposes, but they have a lower BTU rating than these, so they have less, they will produce less heat per pound or per whatever measurement you're using to measure them. And then, more pressure, more heat, more science stuff, and you get anthracite. Anthracite is nearly pure carbon. It's not pure carbon. Uh, depending on where you look, I've seen, I tried to find a good percentage of how much carbon was in anthracite, but I get everything from like 85% to like 98% carbon is considered anthracite. And that there was wider ranges and other websites that I, so I don't know exactly what it is, but it's really high percent carbon. Um, most places said it was higher than 90, 90% ish. So, and this is essentially the highest grade of coal that we can use for burning because there is technically one more grade of coal because graphite cannot, is also considered coal and graphite is just pure carbon. It, it actually is pure carbon. But the covalent bonds, science word, the covalent bonds are tight enough that it takes more energy to break them, which means it takes more energy to burn it. And once you get into graphite, it basically takes more energy to burn it than the energy you get out of it. So that's why we don't burn graphite. I may be wrong on that. That's what I found when I tried to look it up. That's actually one of the reasons that Smiths use this a lot too, because this stuff takes a lot of heat to burn. So you have to have a good hot fire going to use this. This stuff will continue to burn 
even if you don't have a super ridiculous hot fire. This, you can light with a piece of paper. This, this is really, really, really hard to light with paper. I'm sure it would be possible if you like compressed it and turned it into a log, but then it would essentially be lighting it with wood. So yeah, this is really hard to light. So that is the journey of coal and charcoal has nothing to do with coal. We'll go over there now. Charcoal and wood. These are essentially the same thing. Charcoal used to be wood. When you burn wood, it goes through chemical processes, science stuff happens, and the charcoal is the carbon that was in the wood. Now these are briquettes. This is charcoal that's been ground up and mixed with some sort of binder and then molded into this form. So, now that we got some basics, let's talk about some differences. Wood, it's abundant, it's everywhere, easy to get. When you light a wood fire, you light the wood, wait for it to turn to charcoal, and then you're actually forging in charcoal when you're forging with wood. Charcoal essentially just skips a step in that process. It's already had all the other stuff burn out, so forging with charcoal and wood are gonna be very similar. Bituminous coal is the go-to coal for most blacksmiths, and I understand why. It is easy to light, gets you a good heat, and it stays lit pretty well without putting air to it. These will both continue to burn with no pressurized air added to them. Charcoal and wood, if they're insulated and can keep their heat, they will burn until they're gone as long as they have an ambient source of oxygen. I don't personally have enough experience with bituminous coal to know how long it will actually stay lit without a forced air source. Anthracite coal is very dense, very hard to light, and will not stay lit for very long without a forced air source. Well, those are the four videos that I'm gonna make about forge fuels. Anthracite, bituminous coal, charcoal, and wood. Probably in that order. And, like I said earlier, Roy Adams is also making some videos on forge fuels. I'm not 100% sure what other fuels he's trying, but I know he was planning on trying anthracite in his forge. He was talking about hardwood pellets and corn. I'm ready to see that video. And if we did all our coordinating right and we got our watches all synchronized, his first video should be out now. So go check it out. I'll leave you a link here and at the end of the video. I haven't seen it. Let me know how it is. I'll, I'll, I'm still going to go watch his video, but I want to know what you think too. And keep an eye on both of our channels for the rest of the videos in this series. I don't know what that was. Thank you for visiting Warp Legacy. If you like this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And if you like what we're doing here at Warp Legacy, head on over to our Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> And show us some support there. Until next time, I'm Tuan. Go to find your legacy. It's good to be back.